Hello, Ascended Warriors. I wanted to come to you today and share an event that changed my life. A couple years ago, right outside of the military, I had hit rock bottom. And by rock bottom, I very much mean tears and snot running down my face, having a straight up panic attack in my old ass car sitting outside of the doctor's office in the middle of the day. Cannot breathe, cannot think, just internally screaming that life was not worth it. Now, what led me to that point was a culmination of a lot of wonderful things, as it usually is. I was unhappy at work. Uh, I had some conflicts with coworkers who made me feel straight up stupid. I had lost um, the man that I was living with, who I wanted to marry. I could no longer afford my bills because now I was living alone and I wasn't making enough. I wasn't sleeping because I was in horrible, horrible chronic pain, um, just really bad neck and back pain. And I was sitting outside the doctor's office who had just given me a bill for neck injections to handle the pain for $1,200. Now, being young and dumb, um, I, I guess I didn't ask how much they were up front. Regardless, the point was that was the last straw for me. And I had my very, very first panic attack. I felt like I was dying. I felt like I wanted to die. My whole world had just crashed around me. And now this is in my 20s. I had already survived uh, an abusive mother. I had survived multiple levels of heartbreak. I had survived separation from my extended family. I felt tough. You know, I'd been in the military. I had done a lot. I had survived a lot. And here I was having a panic attack in my car in the middle of the day. So once I finally caught my breath enough that I could make a phone call, I called my father. He was my lifeline in that situation. Now I'm not one to call people for help. I am not one to ask for help. I'm definitely not one to tell somebody when I'm hurting. I, I, that's a measure of how scared I was that I reached out and called him. And I just broke down and I told him everything that was going on. And I told him, I feel completely overwhelmed. I don't know where to go. And he gave me life-saving advice, which seems so common sense when you're not drowning in stress. He told me to get away, get away for a weekend, go somewhere, go somewhere else, get away from my house, get away from work, get out of my head and focus on something that I had pretty much ignored for most of my career, which is spirituality, my spirituality. Now I'd always been a spiritual person, but it was secondary in favor of career, in favor of achieving and doing and it was never my focus. So I had gone so far off balance with my career that it was my entire world. And I had left me behind. So when he told me I had to get away, he said, there's this group, this spiritual group that he used to be a part of down at Virginia Beach called uh, Advanced Research and Enlightenment, ARE, Edgar Casey's group. And he had gone to this group in the 70s. He said, look, they have spiritual retreats every once in a while. See if they're hosting one. And if they are, I will help you pay for it. Just get out. Get out of your head because you are. Nothing was looking up at that point. I did not see a way out of my current mess. So as synchronistically beautiful as a, the universe can be, there was a retreat in the Blue Ridge Mountains coming up that weekend. Uh, and it was definitely something I could not afford. Um, I hadn't asked for time off. But I felt, I felt the truth in his words that I needed to get away. So I signed up. I signed up. I drove seven and a half hours in my beat up car 
from the DC area down to the Blue Ridge Mountains. I had no idea what the retreat was going to be. I didn't know the woman who was hosting it. Um, I didn't know a single other person there. I had no idea what I was getting into. I was not a part of this group. I had never attended any kind of spiritual conference or retreat at this point. I felt that it was calling to me. And I took a leap of faith and said, you know what? I'm doing it. When I got there and I pull up to this beautiful retreat in the mountains, I noticed that there's probably about 50 women and some men um, sitting around these rocking chairs out in this outside uh, in this patio area. And they are predominantly in their 60s and 70s. Uh, there was maybe three of us that were under the age of 40. And I remember thinking to myself, I was like, what the hell have I gotten myself into? I'm sharing a room with a woman I don't know. Um, I don't know anybody here. And my natural inclination is to separate myself. But I didn't let myself. I said, look, I'm here. I need to get out of my head. Just grab a damn rocking chair and see what happens. This was the first time I was exposed to regression. This is the first time I was exposed to ascended warrior or ascended um, masters, crystals. And the very first class, when we all came together for our very first class under Judith Pendleton, who is the hostess of this retreat, she took us on a guided meditation to see where we were broken, to see where we were hurt. And I remember this, I remember this meditation like it's a movie that plays in my mind. I scanned my body to see where I was hurting and I saw my heart and my heart was ripped into two separate pieces, just jagged, jagged pieces. And she said, all right, now that you've visualized this part, envision yourself sewing up the body part or the pain with a thread of gold, golden light. So I sewed my heart, my two pieces of heart back into one and then did a blessing over the entire thing, calling in healing energy. And it was so vivid and so real and so physical, like I could feel that broken heart that had been broken for a decade, more than a decade at that point. And I remember just breaking. I broke open in that first meditation and I did not stop crying for four days. I purged every scar, every, every bad experience. My soul purged. For four days, for four days, I was not Chris the soldier. I was not a child of abuse. I was not a disliked coworker. I was not a lone woman. I was not in debt. I was divine. And the people at this retreat saw me. They heard me. I got up and spoke in front of the group, sharing the experiences I had the, during these meditations, which in my normal life, I never would have done to be that vulnerable to a group of people. Never. They saw me. I cannot describe what it was like to be seen for the first time in my entire life. So for four days, I transformed. That was my awakening. That was my awakening experience was at this retreat. That experience led me to do many other conferences and many other retreats and started me on the path to where I am now as a teacher. Without that experience, hell, I don't know what I would have done. If I hadn't taken that leap of faith, I can't imagine where I would be right now. Which is why it has always been my dream to host a spiritual retreat for others, to expose other people to the layer, the level of healing and awakening that I was exposed to. So with the muses, we have created shift. And the word shift is exactly what the retreat is. 
shift your mind, get out of the world, get out of the crazy, get out of your troubles, shift your heart, open your heart, start feeling and thinking through here versus here and shift your soul. Open yourself up to the divine you and find out what is possible when you wake up, when you embrace all that you are. This is a retreat for the next generation of spiritual leaders. And that goes for us as well. This is building a community of people who are going to change the world. Now, I know a lot of you, if you're watching this, if you're still listening to me at this point, feel called to do something amazing in your lives. You might not know what it is, but you feel on a cellular level that you are meant to do something. You are. Fear and that feeling of it being too big, or maybe you're not worth it. Maybe it's too, you, 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 I can't possibly save the world. That's just crazy. That's what I was told all the time because I always felt called to do something. If you're watching this, you have a global mission. You are meant to do something on a global scale, but you don't have to do it alone. There are other people who are doing similar missions. And when we come together in settings like this retreat, you link up with people who are meant to support your soul. The other women in the muses and I met at a retreat in Mount Shasta and realized that we were members of a soul group, that we had worked together in many, many lives. And each of us had a mission so great that we were too scared to go it alone that we had put it off because it was so big. But now that we have the support of each other, there's nothing that we can't do. That global mission is possible. It's possible for us and it's possible for you. So if you feel called to either get away, to awaken, to heal, or to embrace what is possible for you, then this is something you need to do. Invest in yourself, take a leap of faith, and trust in your divine aspect. If you do that, if you invite in this, this experience, it will change your life, just like it changed mine. So when I tell you that the power of this event will open you up in a way that you cannot fathom yet, I'm saying that because I know, because I've experienced it. I hope to see you there. If you feel like I'm looking at you right now, you're right. This is a place for masters. And if you're watching this, you are a master. Come and find out what that means for you. And we are here. We are here to support you on this journey and to create a community of souls that can support you forever, not just for this weekend. If you feel called to do this, the retreat is 23 to 27 April in Mount Ida, Arkansas. Check out www.ascended-warrior.com for more information or to sign up immediately. And you can message me anytime you want if you have questions or if you wanna work with me. Life feels really big sometimes. And sometimes we all feel like we're drowning. This might just be your lifeline. I love you and I hope to see you soon.